மும்பை கம்பெனிக்கு அவர் ஓனர் காணமான பிறகு வந்து பசங்க இருப்பாங்க அந்த பசங்க வந்து என்ன பண்றாங்க அப்படின்னா இதை இத்தனை நாள் வச்சிருந்து என்ன செய்ய போறோம் அப்பா வந்து இருக்கிறப்ப வந்து ஒரு அஞ்சு குடம் பத்து குடம் எடுத்தாரு இத இவங்க போய் கம்பெனிக்காரங்க போய் இந்த வீடியோ சிடி போடுற கம்பெனிக்காரங்க போய் அவங்கள்ட்ட போய் ரைட்ஸ் கேட்கறாங்க சார் உங்களுடைய பத்து படம் இருக்கு அதுல வந்து இவங்க கேட்கறது இவங்களுக்கு அதாவது ஓடக்கூடிய படங்கள் ஜெயிச்ச படங்கள் ஒரு ரெண்டு மூணு இருக்கும் அதுல வந்து ரொம்ப மெகா ஹிட்டா இருக்கும் அந்த படங்கள் மட்டும் இவங்க கேட்பாங்க சரிங்க எவ்வளவுங்க தருவீங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்லி கேட்கறப்ப வந்து அவங்க வந்து எங்களுக்கு ஒரு அஞ்சு லட்ச ரூபா கொடுக்கற நாங்க தயாரா இருக்கோம் அப்படின்னோடனே இவங்க என்ன செய்வாங்க எங்களுக்கு பத்தாது பத்து லட்ச ரூபாய் கொடுங்க எங்க படத்தை பூராத்தையுமே கொடுத்துடுறான் அதாவது நல்ல படங்கள் மூணு இருக்கும் போகாத படங்கள் ஏழு இருக்கும் அந்த ஏழு படத்தை சேர்த்தா நீங்க வேலைக்கு வாங்கணும் அப்படின்ட்டு வாங்க டிவி தயார் பண்ணக்கூடிய அவங்க வந்து அக்ரிமெண்ட் போட்டு அதை வாங்கிடுவாங்க அது அக்ரிமெண்ட் போட்டு வாங்கின பிறகுதான் தெரியும் சோர்ஸே இல்லை அவங்கள்ட்ட ஒரு நெகட்டிவ் காப்பியோ லேப்ல எல்லாமே இருக்கும் சார் உங்களுக்கு லேப் லெட்டர் நான் தந்துடுறேன் ஆயிரக்கணக்கான படம் இருக்கு The home DVD market has evolved to a point where several rare and iconic films are now being available to the public in the form of DVDs and CDs. So if you take the case of director Mahindran for instance, um, in the year 2011, Mahindran sir's films like Udri Pukal, Mullum Malarum, Johnny etc. were available. But some of his other films like Nandu, Metti, Puta the Puttukal, Alagiya Kanne and Sasanam were not available at that point in time. So in this context a very interesting story happens in late 2011 Prince of Nandu Metti Puta the Puttukal and Alagiya Kanne started appearing on a streaming site and were there for a few days before the original uploader took them down So I contacted the uh, original uploader over email and asked him as to why he had taken down the prints which he he himself had uploaded and he told me a very interesting story he said that uh, he was a fan of director mahindran he is not based in india and uh, being a fan of director mahindran he wished to share the prints of the films which he had with other mahindran fans who did not have access to these films and he told me that there was absolutely no commercial motives involved but in the process of having uploaded these films he alleged that a local dvd publisher in tamil nadu had downloaded these the same prints had scrubbed off the watermarks and were now and was now exploiting these prints commercially So now you have a situation where the, here is a DVD publisher in Tamil Nadu who has the rights to publish films but unfortunately he does not have any source. Source kadaikama ivanga vandha adha DVD avum aakavum mudiyama andha maadhiriyana nalla nalla thirippadangalai inna indha nimisham varaikku varaamey irukku DVD kalave vandu varaamey irukku. Appa avangalukku vandu VCD ah kedachaalu sertha palaya video cassette ah kedachaalu sertha andha meenikku edhenum or source. Ponnu patta nee paathiru. Ye வீட்டுல <laughs> 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 Perspective. This is something I think the policy makers and the government also recognize 
in the copyright amendment of 2012. So if you look, there is now an amendment, there is a clause in the copyright amendment act which states that it is not possible to assign your rights, your copyright. So let's say it's a lyricist or an author or a music composer, it's not possible to assign your copyright in a medium or a technology that doesn't exist today. Okay. Right? Which means if I was, if you as a producer were approaching me to, for me to license my rights to you or assign my rights to you, I can only assign them for mediums that currently exist. Okay. If there is a new technology tomorrow, you will have to come back to me and ask me to license my rights for that new technology. The ease of duplicating content in digital form has created an awkward situation. Individual collectors and institutions which had preserved rare material over the years, spending huge amounts of money for their upkeep, no longer have the power of absolute ownership. Lending of their content to a researcher or an individual can lead to multiple duplicates of the original, thereby diminishing the value of the original holding. With a stalemate looming, many owners have preferred to tighten their hold on sharing such content, thereby locking all doors for this content reaching the public. Uh, uh, there, there are instances when people or institutions are sitting on rare and in some cases public domain material. Uh, there yeah. is some prima facie evidence to make us believe that rare copies of these material are floating around in closed circles. The value of a material is generally governed by demand in the market. This is a general thing. So my first first part is, has the internet and uh, this copy-paste potential diminished the value of a physical artifact? One. The second thing is, the digital ecosystem is not going to change anyway. So what is the purpose of continuing to hold on such material without letting it out? Nobody is going to make any money tomorrow if they're not going to make any money today, right? So on the first question in terms of, you know, whether the digital proliferation of the rare legal diminishes mm -hmm. their value. I think the central concern here is what notion of value mm -hmm. you're working with. Mm -hmm. So if you take, for example, the classical, let's say, economic idea of value, mm -hmm. uh, which is based on the idea of exchange value, which mm -hmm. is that, you know, the lower the number of copies, the higher the value in terms of what I'm able to Mm. We kind of, you know, harness of them because they are rare, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is also linked to the second part of your question. Mm -hmm. The holding logic has been premised on the idea that if there are rare goods and I hold them, mm -hmm. I will increase their exchange value, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now, in contrast to the idea of exchange value, there are mm -hmm. also two other ideas of value. One is the utility value of a good. Mm -hmm. And then there is a third idea of value, which is, much more difficult to commodify mm -hmm. uh, in the form of IB utility mm -hmm. or in terms of exchange value. And that's really what Walter Benjamin describes as a fancier value, mm -hmm. right? Which mm -hmm. is, uh, for example, in the case of cinema, mm -hmm. a cinephile's passionate investment mm -hmm. in a particular text mm -hmm. or in a particular film mm -hmm. has no real value in terms of uh, either in terms of utility. Mm -hmm. right? I watched the film twice. Mm -hmm. I watched it twice. I don't need to watch it 15 times, but mm -hmm. cinephiles will watch the film 15 times. Mm -hmm. uh, and their investment in actually trying to preserve in, you know, ensuring that there is a kind of a public culture around the film, etc. All of these mm -hmm. add in a way to the fancier value. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that here what happens is that in focusing exclusively on the diminishing of one form of value, mm -hmm. which is the exchange value, mm -hmm. we actually tend to neglect very other, very important mm -hmm. ideas of value, which are other than exchange value, mm -hmm. which include the utility value as well as the fancy value. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, the idea that hoarding mm -hmm. diminishes its value mm -hmm. can philosophically be challenged Mm -hmm. on the idea of an understanding of the copy itself, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you take the etymological roots of the word copy, it comes from copia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is the same word that gives rise to copiousness, mm -hmm. to copulation. In other words, to an abundance or a plentiful. Mm -hmm. But if you use the word copy mm -hmm. today, you're referring to something that takes away mm -hmm. rather than adds to. <laughs> and I think that in the conceptual difference between the two uh -huh. is the perspective of someone who wants to hold and control uh -huh. versus someone who wants to proliferate. It says it's under maintenance, but it has been under maintenance for a little while. 
um, and I met him and I think the reason it's under maintenance is because he doesn't quite know how to control people from pirating his films when they're online. Um, I'm not sure, okay. it's speculation yeah. but... There is absolutely nothing in the law that prevents NFAI from creating an affordable commercial model yeah. based on out of copyright films that they have. Okay. Okay. Fine. Now once someone buys a DVD and okay. they make a copy or they put it on YouTube, and if you can't do anything about it. They are not the owners of the copyright. Yeah. You are not the owner of the copyright. Neither is the owner. Okay. The producer is the owner of the copyright. Okay. The, the owner of the copyright in the world are the public. Okay. 